chance to get here. It is 6.07 p.m. This is a regular meeting of the Township of Washington in accordance with the requirements of the New Jersey statutes regarding open public meetings. Notice of this meeting was legally advertised in the South Jersey Times as well as posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building. Fire exits are located through the double doors to your left and right. Please silence all mobile devices. This meeting is being videotaped. Anyone who does not wish to be seen on television may be excused. This will be shown on Channel 9 every week, Sunday at 9 p.m., Wednesday at 7 p.m., Friday at 10 p.m., and Saturday at 10 p.m., and will continue until the next meeting. This meeting is being live streamed on YouTube. It can be viewed <clears throat> by clicking the link on our Washington Township web webpage. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Hello. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, one God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Before we get started, uh, on Friday night, our community lost a young soul, a 16-year-old girl from Washington Township High School. Um, so if we can, just bow our heads in a moment of silence for her and her family during this time. Thank you. Ah. Roll call, please. Mr. Del Pia? Here. Mr. Deverello? Here. Mr. Bennett? Here. Mr. Brown? Here. Mr. Yerkes? Present. Mayor Burns? Here. Mr. Russo? Here. Mr. Javieri? Here. Thank you, Chrissy. Um, before we get to our regular meeting, um, I have an announcement that um, effective and immediately, I'm going to step down as council president um, just so. And I know I don't have to give a reason, but uh, you know my business and everything's been busy, and I've given 110 percent since I've taken the position. And if I can't give 110 percent, even though it's 95 percent, um, that's not what the, the township needs. So I'm going to step down and um, hand it over to the clerk. Good evening. At this time, I will take nominations for council president. I'd like to nominate Peter Delbarillo as council president. I second that. Any other 
Hearing none, nominations are now closed. I will take roll call. Mr. Yerkes? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Delapia? Yes. Mr. Deborello? Yes, thank you. Mr. Deborello will be uh, swearing in, sworn in by Assemblywoman Beth Sawyer, if you could come up. Congratulations, Council President. I'm handing the gavel over to you. Okay, we'll now take uh, nominations for the Council Vice President. Okay, we'll now take nominations for the Council Vice President. Have a nomination, please. Anthony Delapia. I, I nominate Anthony Delapia for Council Vice President. Second. Second. Uh, Any other nominations? Seeing none, closed. Oh, roll call. <laughs> roll call, please. <laughs> Mr. Yerkes? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Delapia? Yes. Mr. Deborello? Yes. Commissioner. Commissioner Chris Conwell, please come to the front.
before we start, I just want to say a couple things. First of all, these, these are big shoes to fill, so thank you, Council President. Thank you to the rest of the Council and Mayor. Um, I want to thank, I get all choked up. I want to thank Sue Eggman. Uh, I know it was a lot for you to be here tonight. I appreciate that. I want to thank Meg and my, and my, my children, my parents, and my brother. You know, you, you, you get into politics because you want to make a difference in people's lives, and then people like Sue Eggman make a bigger difference in your life. So thank you so much for being here. It, it really means the world to me. Uh, your friendship, uh, uh, you know, just everything you've done for me, I, I could never thank you enough. So thank you so much. Now we're going to get in, into, into our, our presentations. Uh, first, we're going to have Nicole Lanuti come up, and Nicole's going to make a presentation about a first responder, special needs first responder bag that Nicole put together. She made this presentation recently at Rotary, and uh, it, it just blew everybody away. It's, it's just an amazing idea, and I think it's really going to make the difference in so many lives. So if Nicole can come up and please make this presentation. So <laughs> Um, oh, thank you. I can stand over here. I need my hands. I'm just trying. Is this one? Is this one? On? I can stand here. I just wanted to keep her. Um, so my name is Nicole Lanuti. This is my husband, Steve Cora Sophia. Um, and this is SJ. And this is Luke. Um, we are the founders of the Blackbird Foundation. Just a little bit of a background, we started the foundation in 2017 after um, having some difficulty getting Sophia uh, the equipment that she needed. She was uh, two and a half at the time and she still didn't walk. Um, she's a very excited. Um, so she, at two and a half she did not walk and we were trying to get her a gait trainer to help her walk and insurance kept denying her. Um, so we had a really tough time getting the therapy services and equipment that she needed. Um, eventually, we were granted the piece of equipment, and it took eight months to get to us. Thankfully, she took her first steps in that time period. So when, she, when the gate trainer came, we gave it to another friend of ours that um, their child wasn't walking. That kid walked. They gave it back to us. We gave it to somebody else. Um, that little girl, she is also a township resident. She has it still to this day. Um, but we realized how many families were having the same situation that we were with this lack of need for their child to survive. So um, we started the foundation to be able to grant therapy services and equipment to these families that insurance was taking too long or they were getting denied. Um, over the years, we also adapted the foundation into doing community inclusion projects. Um, we've done communication boards throughout the school district, um, in the playground, in public spaces. Um, we've worked with other um, organizations and other families and different organizations within the towns um, to try to make sure different spaces are inclusive of everybody with special needs. Um, <clears throat> so. We have three big projects going on right now. She's done. <laughs> um, so we have the communication board project. Um, there are specialized boards with different words to communicate if you're nonverbal um, as a child or an adult. Um, so they're going in the school district and also in the playground. And we have a couple other uh, public areas that we're working on throughout the county. Um, another project, our biggest project right now, is the all-inclusive playground in Washington Lake Park. We are hoping to bring the first and only inclusion, all-inclusion playground to Gloucester County. Um, so while I'm on that topic, I just wanted to thank Anthony and Pete as well for being involved. I couldn't, I've been trying to do this for years, and I could not have pulled this off without their help. Anthony, every day he is doing something to make sure this gets done. So thank you so much for that. Um, I know there's a couple families here that this also 
would benefit. This would benefit all kids. Um, and of course to Pete too, for being a support in that, but it's coming one day. So, um, we are hoping to get the grant for that and keep this project moving on. So that's our big project. But for now, we're here to talk about these um, backpacks. So my husband is a longtime first responder. He's currently with the Whitman Square Fire Company. He was previously with Washington Township EMS. Um, he worked in Kennedy Health System in the emergency room for a long time. So we know the need for these from a first responder perspective and from being special needs parents. Um, so this is a lightweight backpack. Um, Sophia can't hold anything in her hands. So this can be placed on the back of a child or an adult that can't physically carry something. Um, inside the bags is, you can, the children are very involved. These are noise, noise canceling headphones. We have, it's like Mary Poppins in here. This is my least favorite sensory toy, but it's the most popular. Um, so we have a couple different fidgets and sensory toys in here. Um, we have dark sunglasses, and I can here, keep holding. Uh, we have a weighted lap mat. Um, so this would go on a child or an adult's lap or be draped around their, um, thank you, or be draped around their shoulders. We have a sensory chew toy. Sophia, this is her favorite thing. Um, she has a sensory input, so she's always chewing on something. A couple more fidget toys, a pack of crayons, and a notepad. And what else we got in here? Poppets. Sophia's poppets. And we have this was created um, by a. Uh, um, MD teacher in our district um, with the help from a speech therapist. These are um, all different types of words that have to do with emergencies for kids that either are nonverbal or they are in sensory overload where they can't get words out. So um, I want hurt, police, fire, help, play, stomach, and they can point to eat, drink more, and it's a way to communicate. So we already have raised enough money to be able to offer 100 of these bags. Um, our first bags are going to be going to Washington Township Police, Fire, and EMS. We have Gloucester Township, uh, Monroe, Winslow, I think Deptford. We've reached out to basically every um, emergency response department in South Jersey. Every department is willing to accept the bags. We are doing everything on a donation, so this is, costs absolutely nothing to our first responders. Um, our donations have come from corporate um, sponsorships. They've come from individual sponsorships um, and donations, family donations. We have it on our website that you can sponsor a bag, and in the bag, <laughs> show the sunglasses. Um, in the bag will be a note card sponsored from so-and-so family or a child, or if you have a business, you can put your logo on it, sponsored from the craft room or wherever you're from. And we have a space on there where you can choose your municipality. So we're encouraging towns to send it to their own town Facebook pages. And if you're from Blackwood, you can put, would like the bag to go to Blackwood. And then we would send them on their way to municipality. We will ship them anywhere. We will hand deliver them anywhere. Next week on spring break, um, Sophia, SJ, and Luke will be going to distribute them to our local uh, organizations. Like I said, Washington Township is going to get our first batch of bags. Um, so if anybody is listening and wants to sponsor bags, our um, Facebook page is Blackbird Foundation, and our website is www.blackbirdfly.org. Um, you can go right on there, sponsor a bag. We will get them directly to your department. Um, so right now with the 100 bags, it sounds like a lot, but we're only able, we're putting one in each Washington Township ambulance. There's a few going to the fire department and we're able to outfit police for like one per squad or one per shift. Excuse me. Our goal is to get one in every vehicle. We, I, th I think Chief Gersick, <coughs> And we have like 92 cars or something like that. So our goal is to sponsor enough bags 
to put one in every emergency response vehicle and then have extras where if they needed to be used, and these are even good for typical kids in an emergency that maybe the sound or the lights are too much, just as a calming, it helps the help first responders, it helps them help them. Um, so uh, right now we're able to fit each department with a few bags. We want to fit every department with all vehicles and backups so when they use it they have backups um, to replace them so that's pretty much our project um, you can find it on our website on our Facebook and um, thanks for having us that's it. agree more with your vision of community where, of a community where everyone regardless of their abilities feels safe valued and supported these special need these special needs first responders bags are just another example of your genuine desire to make a difference in the lives of those around you I know you don't like this stuff but you're you're consistently there for our community members in time of need always offering your support guidance and compassion and and you do it without hesitation um, Washington Township may be the largest municipality in Gloucester County, but we have a small town heart, and it's because of people like you that make us shine. Um, on behalf of our community and everyone in this room, I, ex I extend our gratitude to you for your kindness, your compassion, your generosity, and I'm very, very proud to call you my friend. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mayor. Now we'd like to bring up Kelly Stout, who is Miss Wheelchair New Jersey. Kelly, please come up. So Kelly Stout's platform as wheelchair, Miss Wheelchair New Jersey is a powerful testament um, to her dedication to creating positive change for individuals with disabilities. By advocating for increased awareness of the need for caregivers, she shines a light on the fundamental importance of independence for people living with disabilities. Your efforts serve as a catalyst for, for, for fostering a more inclusive society where everyone has the support they need to live fulfilling lives. Your passion, empathy, and determination inspire us all to work towards a world where every individual, regardless of ability, can thrive and flourish independently. So we ask you here tonight, and we have other legislators here um, that want to hear your platform. And I'd like to acknowledge, um, we have uh, Congressman Norcross, is, he was out of town, he could not be here, but we have a representative from his office, Dalen Hackley, he's back here. If you, you can come up if you like. <laughs> we also have our two assemblymen from Legislative District 4, um, Dan Hodgson and Cody Miller. Yeah. On the county level, we have our director, Frank DeMarco, and we have our commissioner, Chris Conwell. Do you want to say something? You get a line? No? Dan? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Do you have, do you want to say something? Oh, you want, okay. In recognition of Kelly Stout, Miss Wheelchair, New Jersey, 2024, whereas the Gloucester County Board of Commissioners would like to take this time to honor and recognize Kelly Stout, Miss Wheelchair, New Jersey, 2024, 
2004. And whereas Kelly was awarded winner of Ms. Wheelchair, New Jersey 2024 on October 15, 2023 with her platform, Independ Independent Living for All. Whereas Kelly graduated from Cherry Hill High School West and attended Wright State University majoring in science. Whereas Kelly worked at the Office of Disability Services helping students with disabilities make successful trans transition from high school into college. Whereas Kelly then worked as a transitional specialist for the ARC of New Jersey under the CARES program where she developed re-entry resources for people with disabilities who became involved with the criminal justice system. Whereas Kelly graduated from Wright State University with a master's in rehabilitation counseling and now uses her extensive knowledge, passion, and education as a case manager for St. John of God Community Services to enrich and improve the lives of others. Whereas Kelly will travel to Grand Rapids, Michigan in August to compete for the national title of Ms. Wheelchair America, we all wish her the best of luck. Now therefore be it complained, pro proclaimed that I, Frank J. DeMarco, as director, and on behalf of the 2024 Gloucester County Board of Commissioners, Jim Jefferson, Matt Wang, Nicholas DeSilvio, Denise DiCarlo, Joanne Gattinelli, and Christopher Conowell, Jr., to hereby recognize Ms. Kelly Stout as Ms. Wheelchair, New Jersey, 2024. Kelly, we have one more proclamation we're going to read, and this one is from myself and all the council members here. <laughs> Ms. Kelly Stout as, wheelchair, as Ms. Wheelchair, New Jersey, 2024. Whereas the mayor and council of Washington Township recognize outstanding individuals who make significant contributions to our community. And whereas it's Ms. It's Ms. Kelly Stout has demonstrated exceptional leader, leadership, advocacy, and resilience in her role as Ms. Wheelchair in New Jersey. And whereas Ms. Kelly Stout, a remarkable individual, has been selected to compete in this prestigious Miss Wheelchair America 2025 pageant, representing the strength, determination, and spirit of New Jersey. And whereas Ms. Stout's platform focuses on increasing awareness of the crucial need to secure caregivers, enabling people with disabilities to live independent, independently, thereby highlighting the importance and of, of accessibility and inclusion within our society. And whereas despite facing challenging due to spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy, Ms. Stout has exemplified courage, preserva preservation, and grace, inspiring others to overcome obstacles and pursue their dreams. And whereas, Miss Wheelchair America serves as a beacon of empowerment for people with disabilities, providing them with a platform to advocate for themselves and others, fostering a more inclusive and equitable society. And whereas, it is essential to recognize and celebrate organizations like Miss Wheelchair America, which play a vital role in championing the rights and dignity of individuals with disabilities, promoting awareness and driving positive change in our communities. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Lori J. Burns, as mayor, and on behalf of the 2024 Washington Township Council, Peter Del Barello, Anthony Della Pia, Rich Bennett, Don Brown, and Jack Yerkes, do hereby recognize and commend you, Ms. Kelly Stout, for, her, for your outstanding achievements and dedication to the community. We extend our heartfelt, heartfelt congratulations and best wishes as you compete in Ms. Wheelchair America 2025 pageant. Furthermore, we encourage all residents to support Ms. Kelly Stout and the Ms. Wheelchair Organization in their mission to promote accessibility, inclusion, and empowerment for individuals with, indi with disabilities. <laughs> Peter, you want to say something? Yeah. Oh, Dan's going to say. Okay. Hi, Kelly. <clears throat> I'm humbled. I'm Dan. Please accept this uh, citation from the New Jersey State Senate and the State Assembly, which recognizes you for your advocacy work, and good luck in your competition. Thank you. Well, we would also would like to congratulate you. Um, the Board of Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Conowell actually brought this to my attention. And when I looked it over, it said all the, all the good things in there, disabilities, uh, uh, solutions or uh, 
whatever, whatever the department is, uh, Ark of New Jersey and uh, St. John of God used to be, I'm, I'm a Depper guy, I used to be over there a lot, I used to have the, uh, for a number of years they used to have the superstars from the, uh, um, what is it, the, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank on the, on the name. Uh, I, I know it is, I know it is. But with those, with those three things mentioned, we want to say congratulations. Uh, you gentlemen made me nervous when I walked in. I thought, oh my God, what the heck did I do? <laughs> Thank God you've only moved a couple of feet. <laughs> congratulations to both of you. And congratulations to you. All right, Peter, it's all you. Well, Kel's another person you get to meet when, when we actually became friends on social media and uh, we got to meet up and, and we, we were talking for about what it felt like an hour and a half and we went and we covered every topic from religion to politics to every issue you shouldn't talk about. We just had such a great time together and it was so important that, that I really want everyone to hear your mission and what you're doing and bringing all these legislators together all here for you tonight. So please tell us all about, about your platform. Well, thank you so much. Well, well, thank you so much everyone. This is such an amazing honor. Um, so, as Peter mentioned, um, my platform is um, uh, independent living for all. So, even though there is a lot of different things that go along with independent living for people with disabilities, my platform, as Lauren said, focuses on securing car <coughs> caregivers for people with disabilities. And so, when I was moving to my apartment, that was something that I struggled with. And so um, I struggled with um, not only finding them, but having them for like a long time. You know, a couple of them had to leave for different reasons. And so other things that I noticed were also important were like seeing how I could get along, along with them and seeing how, you know, how they tr um, treated me, like if they treated me well, and if they like put my, my well-being above their own. So those are a couple of things that I think are really important for people with disabilities in terms of like um, having people help them, you know. I was wondering, um, how many of you in the audience are parents of kids with disabilities? So I'm sure many of you wonder what is going to happen to your child when, you're no, when you are no longer here. And um, <clears throat> I personally have three amazing sisters who I know will be there for me. And I know that, you know, it's unfortunate that not every, every person with a disability has that. So that's why I really want to advocate for people with disabilities to have all their services for uh, secure and caregivers so they can live on their own. And also, so you parents don't have to worry about what's going to happen to them. Because I know that that's a big um, concern I know for all parents in the future whether your child has a disability or not. So I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone, and I'm so thankful for this opportunity. Thank you.
You're welcome. You too. It must be you. That concludes our summary, uh, portion of our meeting. If anyone wishes to leave, they can do so now. It's just my parents. <laughs> and my brother. <laughs> the other double brothers. My wife and son, okay. My mom left. All right, now we need to move to the bill list. Yep. We need approval for the bill list. Okay, well, now we need approval for the bill list. Can I have an approval? A motion. Motion. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Yerkes? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Delapia? Yes. Mr. Deborello? Yes. Can I have a motion to approve the regular minutes from March 13, 2024? I make motion. Second. And roll call, please. Mr. Yerkes? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Delapia? Yes. Mr. Deborella? Yes. The following resolutions are by consent agenda only and require a vote for all listed. Each one must be read by title. If any member of the council wishes to have one removed and heard separately, they need to indicate prior to the reading of these titles. Does anyone need anything read separately? Uh, council President, I believe uh, we have a request to pull out resolution 111. And do that um, first. Okay. Will the clerk please read that? Resolution 111, 2024. Resolution appointing Adam Malamut, Esquire, of Malamut Law, as solicitor and authorizing the proper officials to execute an agreement for professional services. Motion. A second. second. Roll call, please. Mr. Yerkes? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Delapia? Yes. Mr. Deborello? Yes. Okay, now, if the clerk will please read the other resolutions. <laughs> you have a chair. You have a chair. Is there any discussion on any of the resolutions? Anybody have any discussions? Okay, will the clerk please read the resolutions, please. Yes, on to resolutions. R108-2024, resolution approving a large gathering application for JMK Events Taco and Food Truck Festival in Washington Lake Park on July 13, 2024. Resolution 109-2024, resolution approving a large gathering application for JMK events, food truck, and music festival in Washington Lake Park on October 12, 2024. Resolution 110, 2024. Resolution to authorize the submission of a grant application for FY 2024 Local Recreation Improvement Grant with the Department of Community Affairs. Resolution 112, 2024. Resolution authorizing the submission of an application to the Office of Senator Cory Booker Congressionally Directed Spending Allocation Request, FY 2025, for roadway infrastructure improvements to American Boulevard in the Township of Washington. Resolution 113, 2024. Resolution awarding a contract for the purchase of 17-foot finishing mower tractor for the Department of Public Works through Sourcewell Cooperative Pricing System. Resolution 114, 2024. Resolution awarding a bid to Argent Bright Landscaping and Lawn Care, LLC, for 2024 property maintenance services. Resolution 115, 2024. 
Resolution approving the release of a safety and stabilization bond for Burger King located at 101 Blackwood Barnesboro Road, Block 7.01, Lot 6.7, and project number 0818P482.12. Resolution 116, 2024. Resolution canceling tax taxes for Salvatore R. Mazaka, a totally disabled veteran, at 2 South Mars Court, effective February 11, 2024. Resolution 117, 2024. Resolution canceling taxes for George Allen Tucky, a totally disabled veteran, at 66 Quail Hollow Drive, effective February 23, 2024. Resolu Resolution 118, 2024. Resolution canceling taxes for James Ryan Reeves, a totally disabled veteran, at 50 Peacock Circle, effective February 27, 2024. Resolution 119, 2024. Resolution canceling taxes for Edward Park Jr., a totally disabled veteran, at 11 Farmingham Drive, effective March 5, 2024. Resolution 120, 2024. Resolution authorizing refund of tax overpayments. And lastly, Resolution 121, 2024. Resolution approving the addendum to the agreement between the Township of Washington and Municipal Services, Sur Supervisors, Superintendents, and Coordinators. Thank you, Christy. Can I have a motion to approve resolutions 108-24 through 110-24? Second. Second. And 112-24 through 121-24? Motion? Motion. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Yerkes? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Delapia? Yes. Mr. Deverello? Yes. All right, now we're going to move on to old business, new business. Does anybody have any old business and new business to discuss? Okay. Want to, let's move on to reports. So, all right, Mr. Bennett, Councilman Bennett. As usual, my, my thing is don't speed while the speed limit. Go down every day. Plus, it causes a lot of accidents in town, so you're doing all right. So make sure it's at 25. show on the 27th. We also will have a cleanup on the 20th, which we'll put out on the, on the web. Uh, you know, if anybody would like to volunteer some time, we do need the help. Um, it takes a lot of work to do an event, you know, like the car show. Um, I spend most of my time for the five hours up in the parking lot, and I do need people to help, uh, whether it's civic organizations, <coughs> like the Boy Scouts to help me, or whether it's your organization. Very important that, but again, get out to the car show. Also, with the car show, we have a booklet. We'd like to advertise on that. You're more than welcome to make contact as I go to the web page. Uh, it's part of what we use to make uh, money to help fund that. Um, uh, also, um, birthdays coming up on the 22nd of April. We'll have more information. Thank you, Councilman Bennett. Councilman Brown. I attended the Library Board of Trustees. Nothing really to report from there at uh, this point. Um, monitor their website, uh, the calendar, um, and continue to use the library. Um, the staff is uh, hardworking for our township residents, and uh, next month they will be coming here to discuss library events um, and promote the library even more. That's it. Okay. Councilman Yerkes. Yes, thank you. Uh, if I could 
piggyback on what Councilman Bennett said. You know, throughout the township, when we're driving, we come to a major intersection like Green Tree Road and Egg Harbor and Green Tree Road, Herfield Cross Keys. Please, if it's a 45 mile an hour zone, you're approaching the intersection, please slow down. When people are making left hand turn, right hand turns, I see people zipping through the intersections, not reducing their speed. And the law does require you to reduce your speed. And that's how accidents happen unnecessarily. Just slow down to 25, 30 miles an hour so that you can prevent that type of thing. And I've been asked uh, to read the following. He wanted me to talk about the community of plots that are down at the uh, Washington Lake Park, uh, right off of Green Tree Road, that entrance. They're 10 by 10, and Leon, how much are they per year? $15. How much? $15. Okay. Contact the people at Public Works. Uh, they will be happy to get you uh, a lot there. And uh, reserve that so you can get on board in the springtime and get it ready uh, for as you uh, hear from The Open Space Advisory Committee in 1966 established a community garden in Washington Lake Park. The garden is located at the Green Tree Park entrance. There are 30 large 10 by 10 foot plots with access to water. The garden was created so that residents who do not have space for a garden could exercise their green thumb. Gardeners can plant whatever they desire, whether it's vegetables or flowers. However, eco-friendly practices are encouraged there still are a number of garden plots available on a first come, first serve basis. There is a modest $15 fee, which entitles you to garden well into November. For additional information, call the Washington Township Public Works Office at 856 589 3227. Thank you. And, real quick, I do. I've had a garden there for the last four or five years, and it is great. And, uh, uh, Leon will tell you I probably have the most wild garden there. Uh, <laughs> but it, take, it takes a lot of work to take care of it, plus uh, it's a weed heaven over there, so you have to be a good weeder. Okay. Vice President Delphi. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, first off, in three years, I haven't got anything from his garden, so yeah, I, mean, I don't, I don't know what he's growing over there. After the meeting, but I agree with you. Uh, first, I want to congratulate uh, one of my best friends, Peter Dabrello, on becoming council president. Um, I, I know you. I know you'll fill the shoes and then some. So, uh, I wish a lot of luck. And obviously, I'm here to help. Yeah. And we're going to still be you, yeah. moving forward. So, congratulations. I wish you all the best. Um, I want to thank you all the dignitaries that came today, all our commissioners and uh, assemblymen, uh, uh, assemblywomen. Um, thank you for coming. It was an honor to have you guys in our audience. Um, congratulations to Kelly Stout. We wish her the best moving forward. Um, I want to thank Nicole Anuti. Um, I've known Nicole, our kids actually went to preschool together, and uh, she does a lot of great stuff, not just uh, some of the things she's uh, talked about, but there's actually other things she does too. So um, we're lucky to have her in our community. So, uh, you know, hopefully she continues the good things and, you know, we get our playground done together. Um, and I, I want to bring up the Bennett family. Um, obviously, I mentioned it earlier, uh, they lost their daughter on Friday night. Um, this is the time where, as a community, we have to get together and support our, our members. Um, it, was, it was a tragic loss. Uh, me and Captain Dabarello were there Monday setting up a crisis center at the high school. And you know, seeing those high school students upset, I mean, it, 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 it made me and Pete upset also. So um, you know, as a community, if you can donate, whether it's a meal or part of a meal, any, anything you could do to help them, let them know that as a community, we have their back and we're here for them for what, whatever they would need. So that's all I have, Captain. Mayor Burns. Uh, I have a couple of things I want to say. Yeah. The first, Vicki texted me, and she said, um, the Environmental Commission has a few slated activities planned for Earth Day, so there'll be more to come for that. And then she said that the Green Team, Environmental Commission, and the Open Space Committee will be kicking off a community-wide tree planting campaign. It's called Washington Township Relief on Arbor Day. 
Um, and the challenge is going to be uh, we want to plant 5,000 trees. Um, I think that's over a period of time. Um, but she says there's going to be more to come, so stay tuned and keep an eye out for that. I just want to remind everyone that this Friday, March 29th, is National Mom and Pop Business Owners Day. Small businesses are a vital part of Washington Township community. Let's show our mom and pop shops that they're much deserved appreciation by shopping locally and supporting small businesses, not only on this Friday, but every day. Um, and then I just want to say yesterday, along with uh, council, well, council president, it was Anthony at the time, and <laughs> vice versa, we um, joined the Tri-State Veterans Memorial Fund members um, to present Mark Eberly from Paul's Healing Heroes with a check for his organization. If you, not heard, if you have not heard of Paul's he Healing Heroes, you should look them up. They're an organization de devoted to pairing service dogs who primarily are from shelters with veterans in need. I'm not sure if many people are aware of this, um, but 22 veterans per day die from suicide. By connecting a veteran with a dog, it helps give them a purpose and helps them feel more comfortable with their day-to-day -day lifestyle. To me, it's a win-win situation as they as they bond their um, as their bonds are formed between the heroes and their furry friends. Um, they become companions. It's nothing short of extraordinary, and to, um, they save each other with their companionship. Uh, if you're looking for an organization to do to no donate to as well as do, uh, Nicole's Blackbird Foundation and, you know, the Bennett's and all that stuff. Really look into Paul, Paul's Healing Heroes. It's, it's fantastic. And if you would have seen these dogs yesterday with, with the veterans that came, it, I could have spent all day in here <laughs> with them. It's just fantastic. Um, and finally, as everyone has already touched on, last week we lost one of our young residents um, in a horrible motor vehicle accident. Um, as a mom, I think... Well, as soon as I found out about it, I, wanted, I, I cried. It broke my heart. But as all of our hearts ache for her family, her friends, and the community affected by this devastating loss, I can't help to feel so incredibly proud to live here in Washington Township. The way the community comes together in the wake of a tragedy for anyone in need never ceases to amaze me. We, find, we really are a big town with a small town heart, and I'm honored to be the mayor here. Um, and I, and, I'm, and I love calling Washington Township my home because of this. Um, as we move forward, I think we need to remember to always be there for our neighbors and to, and to help everyone. We're a community that stands together. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Russo? First, I would like to congratulate Malamut and Associates for their um, appointment, solicitor, and Mr. Wright. Welcome aboard. Um, I'd also like to thank the law firm of King, Mensch, Collins uh, for their assistance through our, our transition. Um, Matt, Brian, and Krishna have been absolute professionals, yeah. and uh, it's been an honor working with you. And look forward to continue working with you as well. Thank you, Mayor. Any solicitor have anything to say? Okay. Just thank you for Yeah, look forward to working with you, absolutely. So I'm going to say the same things. Uh, first, I wanted to thank my wife and my son, Peter, was here. I also have Nico Blaze and Jackson that weren't here. I want to thank the Assemblywoman. I want to thank uh, Commissioner Conwell. You know, the, the thing uh, about this is stepping into a, like it really is big shoes. Anthony and I, Anthony's right. I mean, we've become so close. He is such a, a, a dear friend. We talk seven or eight times a day. So I'm on the phone. Meg knows I'm talking to Anthony. But he cares so much. And, and he's more than just a friend. He's been a real mentor. I mean, I've learned so much from you, and, and, and I, having you next to me has, has really been, honestly, this has been one of the thrills of my life being in this job. To go back to uh, what, what's going on with, with Sophia Bennett is, it's true. We're 50,000 strong here in Washington Township, but we're a big town that, that's really more of a small town feeling. To see, because there's no words in times like this, right? There, there's, there's no words. There's only actions. And every resident has come out. You see it on social media. You see them coming out. There's fundraisers that are happening now. I know that, that Rita's is working on something right now. I was talking to Mayor and, and also a Council Vice President about maybe having a wall in our park to remember their smiles, remember their faces, remember their names, because I think that's what parents really worry about. Like we were saying, you know, remembering their children, never forgetting them. Remember Sophia and, and people like Tony Donato and RJ and, and Nikki Collini, never forgetting their names. So there's something we're going to do for this. We're, we're already going to work on it. We're going to come up with something. We're thinking the park, right? We're thinking somewhere where all other children will see those and their, their pictures will be up there and they'll see their smiles because they've really made such a difference here in town. So 
please continue to do that. Uh, again, like I said, this is an honor to be here. Uh, a little rusty, so I'm, I'm going to, you know, we'll get through that. Anything else I want to add? Clerk? I'd just like to add a few things. On the Sophia Bennett, uh, a friend, a family friend did start a GoFund account. Un unfortunately, I don't know exactly uh, how to get there, but I do know it's on Facebook for those that would like to uh, donate through that. Also, uh, somebody set up a Venmo. Um, they'll, they're taking any donations. doesn't matter if they're, they're taking anything. I, I do know that she does have younger siblings that are also going to need attention as well. Um, so if anybody, if you want to call my office tomorrow, I'm in the clerk's office. We could try to find that information out for those that are interested in that. Um, we, we do have a shred event being held on April 6th here in the municipal building parking lot um, from 9 a.m. to noon. There is a limit of four bags or boxes per car. Paper clips and staples are okay, but no binders or binder clips. Um, all dogs are required to be registered and vaccinated. Please reach out to my office here at the, at the municipal building in the clerk's office and we can assist you. And by, uh, the primary election will be held Tuesday, June 4th. The deadline to change your party efficient Affiliation is April 10th. The deadline to register to vote is May 14th. If you have any information, questions, the clerk's office is a great resource um, for information if those, if you should need that. And also, Friday, March 29th, in observance of Good Friday, we will be closed and we will reopen on Monday, April 1st. Um, happy Easter and Holy Weekend to everyone. Okay, now this time we're going to open up to the public. Please, before meeting the public, I would ask that everyone please follow the public decorum posted, which also is attached to the public agenda, and limit your comments to five minutes. Once you've completed your comments or questions, please take a seat, and I'll ask if any member of the governing body or their designee wishes to address the comments or questions asked by the person who just spoke. Can I get a motion open to the public, please? Motion. Roll call. Oh, sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we'll open to the public. Hello, my name is Charles Hughes, 31 North Child Street, Woodbury, New Jersey. Thank you for letting me speak tonight. I handed out, you should all have handouts. Uh, the front page has everything in it and everything else is backup. I'm talking to you in general about transportation in Washington Township. Uh, the first thing I'd like to talk about is a, a proposed light rail project from Glassboro to Camden called the GCL. And I assert that Washington Township would derive no benefit from that. Uh, in 1996, the Camden, or Gloucester County Board of Freeholders put out a resolution opposing the light rail. And it shut the project down for seven hours, or seven, seven years, pardon me. Uh, Freeholder director James Atkinson said the money could be used in a better fashion than on the state recommended Conrail route. And they called it the Conrail route because there were other uh, ideas of running the train or buses down 42 and, and 55. He went on to say it doesn't address the 4,000 car trips a day coming out of Washington Township, said Atkinson, a township resident. He's the one that the, the county park is named after. Also, he said that the route ignores a major employment center, the Pure Land Industrial Park on the other side of the county in Logan Township. Now, we've been studying this for three years. And uh, today, we believe that the best mass transit idea for Gloucester County is called Demand Driven Ride Share. And it's successfully operating in Jersey City Camden City, and New Brunswick. The, the program in Jersey City has moved 2 million people since it was instituted in 2020. It works just like Uber does, if anybody's ever taken Uber. Uh, my friend and I went to Camden two weeks ago. I downloaded the app onto my phone. Uh, it knew where I was. I said, I want to go to this restaurant. It said, in 20 minutes, 
the driver called Cecilia in a black uh, Chrysler minivan with the following license will pick you up. And 20 minutes on the dot, they showed up. It cost me two bucks, and it cost him two, a dollar. And all these systems work that way. I'm trying to find out how much the real cost of it is, because I think it does get subsidized. But the, these, uh, these vehicles, these minivans, fleets that they have, are always full. The New Jersey Transit buses in South Jersey are always empty. So that's why these things only work if people need them. <clears throat> there was, a, there was a, an article, a, a letter to the editor in the South Jersey Times that I saw back in, in January, and it was entitled, Jobs Grow in South Jersey, But Working Poor Cannot Reach Them. And it was by Frank Miner, the mayor of Logan Township. And he said, I'm sitting on top of 4,500 job opportunities, but close to 1,000 of them could be filled by the working poor, people who don't have cars because they don't have money, and I have no way to get there. And he said, went on to say that he negotiated with, with uh, New Jersey Transit to have round-the-clock buses because they do three-shift operations. I sent them an email. I sent them the information for the mayor of, of um, Jersey City and Camden and uh, some others and said, why don't you put your heads together and do something? He's moving out on a rideshare system. Uh, I asked him, where are you getting the money from? Isn't that a, that's an important question. Always, sure. He said, I got 120 businesses in Logan Township, and I told them that I was going to help them get good employees, and they said, we're, so I think they're going to do a public-private partnership. Now, there are, there are lots of people in Washington Township. I think there's... 2,500 people below the poverty line in Washington Township. If they could get to work, they would work. So if you get a chance, talk to Mayor Miner, and maybe you could put your head together on that. And the last thing I'd like to say is I'd ask you to think about if you agree with me that, that this light rail isn't going to help Washington Township, even though you're going to contribute through your state income tax to the $5 billion price tag for it and the $50 million a year operating cost for it, then please consider a resolution opposing this. And, and the rest of this package, I have, I have um, resolutions. W Woodbury Heights put out one, Pittman put out one, Winona put out one, Mantua put out one, and then historically I put the one from Gloucester County in there as well. Uh, you see what the other, so four out of the seven municipalities along the line in Glo Gloucester County are opposing it, and this time, next by December, we think that we're going to have Woodbury, Westville, and Glassboro uh, voting on this in ballot questions, Gloucester City, and uh, Brooklawn as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Tony Alvario. I live at 522 Delaware Street in Woodbury. And uh, I am one of the people that spearhead this, this fight with the GCL. Uh, let me give you a little bit of background. I want to speak too much because I could talk about this thing for hours and hours and hours and give you all kinds of information. I just want you to know that most of the research that's coming out that's doesn't agree with what the, the Delaware uh, Port Authority says comes out of our group, okay? We are the one that distributed all the research, mainly because Charlie is an, is an engineer, satellite engineer, and I was a, an analyst uh, uh, for the Philadelphia Housing Authority. I, did, I um, directed four of their departments for over 30, 45 years, so I know what I'm talking about. Um, but what I want to tell you basically is that we are in a dogfight. And we're in a dogfight with the Gloucester County. We're in a dogfight because although we are not political, 
because we have people in there, Democrats, Republicans, and, 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 uh, and the independents. Sometimes this thing gets political, okay? But with the, with the, with the county, it, it's a particular situation because this is Mr. Sweeney and Mr. Norquist's baby. That's, they're pushing this thing full, full blast. Now, if you look at the map, that little red line that you see on the map, that's 18 miles. Every other place in South Jersey is a transportation desert. You cannot get there anywhere except three lines by buses, and those buses are empty. So we started fighting this thing because mainly it impacted negatively on every one of the township along that rail, okay? So we said, well, you know, you can't fight something if you don't have something to replace it. And that's why we came out and we, we actually found a good replacement. Mr. Deuce uh, talked about right share. I wish you keep, keep uh, that in mind because it works. It works very well. But we are hoping that's going to happen here is that we get a right share county-wise so that we can cover and service the whole county. And let me tell you, a couple of bucks to go throughout the county, county is not a bad idea. It's a good idea, okay? Uh, this thing for you particularly is bad because you're paying for it and you're getting absolutely nothing for it. We're getting something for it. We're getting all the negatives, okay? And every township has a particular negative. If you go to Westville, they got water negative. They actually want to put a station in a wetland. They don't tell you that in the, in the environmental statement, okay? But we found out, okay? In Winona, they would contaminate all the water uh, lakes around Winona. In Woodbury, Woodbury, I don't know if you if you ever been uh, on on um, Delaware Street from the station to the uh, to the main street on Delaware on uh, would would be uh, would be Delaware changes into. Uh, uh, Cooper to Delaware, and then the other one is broad. But if you go up from the station to the, to the, to the light, it takes four minutes when doing traffic time to go from the station to the light. This light rail comes every seven and a half minutes. Every seven and a half minutes. Can you imagine the kind of gridlock they're going to have over there? Okay. One, another big event thing that we don't like is the cost. The cost of this thing is immense. It, uh, we, we, we figure out now it's about $5 billion. $5 billion to cover just a little bit of a red line. When $5 billion buy a lot, a lot of rice share vehicles that could cost every one of us a couple of bucks. So why are we why are we back in this monstrosity? We're back in this monstrosity because Norcross and Sweeney and all the people in the Gloucester County, that's what they want. Okay? We're hoping that you hear us and we're hoping that you heard what Mr. Uh, you saying. We'd like to have this thing on, on the ballot, on the, on the docking for next, next uh meeting, and maybe you can pass a resolution against it and back us up. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Best one? Seeing none. Motion to close to the public. Motion. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. I was just brought to my attention that today is uh, Jersey Mike's uh, charity uh, day of giving. At their locations on Egg Harbor Road, Diacme Plaza, and over on the Black Horse Pike. If you have time, stop by, pick up some dinner. 100% of their proceeds go to uh, their charity. Um, so that if you have time, stop by tonight on your way home. Thank you so much. Motion to adjourn. Second. Our next meeting will be April 10th at 6 p.m. Thank you.